mate Jim Simons from uh, Alive in VR. We've spoke, we've seen your stuff. Uh, we did a little. Uh, uh, playing the video on uh, Sonic Talk, and I was really impressed with the whole thing. And you, you're here. Is this part of the Ableton booth? That uh, yes, so I'm on the side of the Ableton booth. Excellent. So, tell me a little bit. What was the system you're running here? Okay, so this is an HTTV VR system, high-end VR system, and a PC running a great graf graphics card, 3D graphics card, and I'm just standard focus on I/O. So, tell me a little bit about what how you got started in this because I mean obviously your VR skills you know you're programming you're, you're, you're kind of auteur aren't you you're writing the code doing the graphics you're doing the whole yes through. yeah I mean basically I've been working in music technology for quite a long time um, and VR is kind of the next big thing to me in terms of user interfaces and interaction um, so I really wanted to bring music production into VR and um, this is the first project where I've actually learned how to use all those tools which is basically game engines um, and what you're doing in this is essentially translating 3D actions in the in the environment you've created into MIDI that is then talking to Ableton Live. Is that yes, right? via MIDI remote scripts inside Ableton. Yeah. The latency is really uh, impressively low. I tried it earlier, and uh, it was very it was very immediate, very kind of like like you're there. Yeah, that's true, and that's part of the way VR works. Really, that it's very fast scanning, and basically the game engines run on 90 frames per second speed which means you get about 10 or 11 milliseconds of latency in your interaction. Right, which is kind of not, not that great at all. So, I mean, you've chosen to go with this sort of live, Ableton Live interface initially. I mean, can you see any other application? I mean, it seems like real-time MIDI controllers would be a really good place yes. to go as well. So there is, there is space for lots of generic control or 3D XYZ control, those sort of things. Um, the reason I'm, I'm using Ableton is I want people to make a, an end-to-end -end tune, really, and follow the workflow that's in push. So take me through what's going on with this setup here. What we're looking at is a kind of a 2D representation of what's happening in the 3D world, right? Yes. Yeah. So what what how, what do you have to do here to make it kind of make a noise and make it happen? So basically these are your virtual hands and there's different ways of controlling the blocks, but the simplest way is you literally put your hand in the block as if these are drumsticks. So and you get the force feedback as your drum as your hand hits the block. Right, so there is, and these these guys up here, these things on the, uh, they're the kind of mapping for positional mapping to, to give you that extra accuracy, right? Yes. So they track this and they track your head. Right. I think we're going to have to have that moment where you put the helmet on and okay. show us what's going on. This is where I look. A bit silly. Right. So actually, the blocks are over here. Um, so we're looking. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'll show you what, uh, what what Jim is doing here. We'll talk at the same time. So uh, I'm going to now move to the screen. It's weird kind of showing 3D and 2D, but <laughs> I'll try and we'll try and uh, it's a bit like radio and imagery, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm now going to pick up one of these blocks, like a snare drum. So I'm literally just putting my hand in it and you get a real-time trigger. And it really is very snappy. It really, I mean, that's the thing that I found, it really is very snappy. You're not, you're not kind of conscious of any latency there. No. And that's, that's, that's the really impressive part of it, right? Yeah, it's very, it's very immersive experience. So let's have a look back at what's going on here. I'll try and... So that, help, that, that shiny helmet there is, uh, is Jim. And those are your hands. And this is kind of a, a wider view of the space, right? So oh, that's, that's your that's view. That's my eye. That's your view, OK. So now you've got these drums sort of out in the world. Yeah. What, what are you going to do with them? I mean, you can play them in real time. Yes. So I've got my snare hi-hat bass drum. And this is just, I mean, that this real-time interaction part of it I mean, that is, that's, that's the thing that I was so impressed with. The latency is, is just, you know, is almost non-existent. It, it you don't feel it. it. Yeah, you don't feel it. it at all, which you're very conscious of. And that's really impressive. So, um, I guess the thing is, how does somebody who's really interested in this, how would they get a setup like this going? I mean, is it, a, it sounds like it might be a bit of investment because of the high-end VR gear, right? Yes. So, at the moment, you've got two choices, which is Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. And then um, V is 599. I think the Oculus is now 399, so it's a lot cheaper. 
Um, but then you do need a high-end graphics card and a Windows machine. So there's right. a bit of a pile of things you need to get. And how do you, I mean, how do you find that it's working with you? I mean, because it's for those people who aren't necessarily used to VR, it's quite a, a discombobulating experience initially, right? Yes, I and mean, it takes, but it probably takes a matter of a couple of goes, and then you start to really adapt. And you kind of forget, you forget these are physical controllers, and they've kind of become your hands. Um, it's, it's part, it becomes a very uh, natural experience. Yeah, and so what have you got planned next? I mean, you could buy this particular application for, uh, for both Vive and Oculus, right? Yes, yeah. So what's next for you? Um, adding more features to this based on what the community wants is, is the main development at the moment. And then maybe a, a much more um, realistic app with real faders and that kind of thing in it. Uh, where do you, I mean, where do you see people using this? Because I mean, you immediately think about live performance, but actually, it's kind of weird because in a live performance scenario, you're not you're sort of there, but not there. It's kind of it's, it's even more disconnected somehow if you're performing. So where where do you see this the strength for this system? Um, number one, making performance is shown on YouTube in exactly the same way as someone like Madion does does or did. Yeah. Um, number two, imagine you're in a club or something and you project up on the on the wall your performance, or do a big projection. Um, also, in the, in the longer term, you can actually have spectators in VR. Ah, that's what I was wondering about, right. So you um, can have other people joining the session, effectively, yes. and watching and being in the space with you. Yes, or, or even collaborating, possibly, at least for firing clips or something that doesn't need um, a really quick... Um, that makes a lot of sense, actually, because purely, because then then it's a shared experience of the of the world you're inhabiting, right? Yes. So, I mean, is this stuff of, is this stuff like has it got like a future in terms of online? Could people be somewhere else in the world in your session, watching you doing your thing somewhere else? Yeah, it's all it's all feasible. It's not in there now, just to be clear. Um, but there's already um, if you look at other social VR apps, that's already happening. People are kind of inhabiting avatars, chatting to each other with the body language and everything. Um, so it's already all there, really, the, the technology. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Because we're, it's, it's almost a glimpse of this kind of uh, the future that we've, we've sort of heard about. It's, it's nearly flying cars, right? <laughs> Virtual, well, in your mind, maybe. Yes, it's it's maybe in my mind. But it's an exciting, I mean, because I, I suppose the thing, I don't, I, I'm not exposed to that much VR stuff, but there's a whole generation of people who are really kind of immersed in this. So this is like a new, it's, it's like a new world. It is a virtual, but it is very convincing. Yes, yeah, and there's some amazing games as well. There's, there's all sorts of different environments that um, people are coming up with. And these systems, the, the, the Vive and the Oculus, are are, that, are they kind of the, the pinnacle of what you can do in VR? I mean, are they sort of better in terms of, say, Xbox and that sort of things? I mean, are they a, a, a world up from that? Um, they're graphically, they're, they're a little bit scaled back from what you'd see on an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 because they, you have to render very fast. Um, and that will come, I'm sure, in the next two or three years. The resolution will, will be up there with, with those. But it seems like the movement accuracy is better on this system than perhaps on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. Jim, thank you very much. Thanks. Cheers.